you want to just give us your opening statement first? My opening statement is we absolutely stunk it up in the first half. Now, I'll give credit to Grambling. Um, I thought Sean did a terrific job with their game plan. Um, they harassed Mike. They jammed him. They doubled him. Um, made some other people have to make plays. And we had some guys that looked like they were handling a baseball or something. It was like they didn't know what the basketball was. Um, 13 turnovers. Mike, too many turnovers in the first half. Has four turnovers, no assists. Um, they were more aggressive. Uh, they got all the 50-50 balls. They took balls from us. They, they did everything they wanted to do. And we just were not very good. And at times it can be quite frustrating because we've got some pups that are going through this and they just have no clue at times what's going on and, and how to sort it out and how to settle down. And one of the things when you're facing pressure is first of all, you've got to face it and you've got to relax and you make the simple plays. That's how you handle pressure. You don't try to throw cross court passes or make easy plays, dribble out of control. You just got to settle down because all pressure wants you to do is speed up and they sped us up. Um, in the second half, I thought we came out a little bit better, had some energy, but quite frankly, we couldn't get Agba. I believe Agba, we couldn't handle him. I had his some terrific freshman. Jeez, 21-16. I saw a film when he got 26 and 20. He's averaging a double-double rebounds. He's averaging five offensive rebounds a game. He had seven. And when he puts his hands on it, that's it. That, that's a man. That's what it looks like. And I told our guys, that's what it looks like when you play against a man. Um, we got better. They made some runs. Uh, we made a run, excuse me, and then they closed it, and they were able to get a couple of and ones, which sort of looked like we just weren't going to get back into it. But we kept fighting. Um, Michael came alive. Um, I don't know what to say about Marcus. I mean, you just, Chase, you're talking about a kid that – First couple of games may have played, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes total, maybe. I'm not sure. I'll have to go back and look at it. Plays 37 minutes tonight and gets 18 and 12. And the one thing about him is when balls are up in the air, you see him and he is the guy that's able to go up and grab it. And he had some plays where late down the stretch where he made some mistakes, he was hesitant, didn't quite, wasn't sure, pulled him out for a second to settle him down. Um, but he, he's got something in him. He's got something in him. Um, damn sure glad we got him. Um, I, I thought one of the differences in the game is our junior class just wasn't good tonight, buddy. They just weren't. Um, Haruna was solid defensively, but he just offensively, Haruna struggled, bobbled balls, missed some layups, stuck his head up and hit a big three. Um, he did do that, but, you know, we, we've got to have more you know, from from that group of guys. And, and it's not about points. It's about being consistent. It's about defending, rebounding, making layups, um, playing the game the right way, um, understanding what we need. Um, Michael comes alive in the second half, you know. And, I mean, those guys, I mean, what, 44 points between them? Boy, that's why they say coaching is recruiting. <laughs> that was coaching right there. But, you know, you have two kids that, step up and give you some points and they made mistakes jake jake gives us 12 haruna i think ends up with 12. Um, i think one of the differences was we went with that final group for the last i don't know if it was maybe the last eight minutes of the first half and then in overtime and one of the reasons i just you know you're trying to find another guy is they went through a stretch to where they got multiple multiple stops the only way they scored were Offensive rebound, stick back, and a couple of free throws. I want to say there was like a five or six minute stretch where they didn't score a bucket. And so we just stuck with that group. They were trying to isolate, ISO on Jake Wright, and Jake did a good job of just trying to keep in front. He had some teammates that helped. And so we rolled them out, and then Darius fouled out, and Darius ends up with five um, defensive boards tonight. So he's back. Glad to see that from Big D that he's able to get on the boards for us. Questions? kind of touched on this, but with like eight minutes left, um, you motioned for everyone to settle down, and how did you want the team to do that? Well, there, there's a lot going on. I mean, there's a lot of moving pieces right now. Um, you know, you're, you're trying to help Mike, but you also have to let Mike be Mike. 
okay? Uh, Mike's nature is aggressive, okay? Uh, in the midst of that, you're trying to help him learn something that really by his junior year he understands, understand what's going on in the game. Why do we need to get a good shot? Why not come down and go yo, 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 no pass shot? Why that's not good? Um, and the other thing is, is they zoned us pretty much the entire second half. So they changed. They f saw the zone was bothering us. And now we've got to make that adjustment um, to the zone. Um, so just trying to get guys to make simple plays. And, and particularly when you, you, you know, I mean, the, the puppies are in there. And, and not letting them get rushed or hurried. And if you'll make simple plays, good things will happen. Um, and, you know, their athleticism bothered us early in the game, quite frankly. Darius uh, called out maybe a little bit before. Uh, how much did his presence? I know he wasn't giving you that much uh, offensively, right? You know, but uh, defensively, him maybe not being in the lineup. Uh, how much did that hurt? Well, I mean, that help. The thing is, is particularly in this game, that kid is a big dude, and Darius is a big guy. So you need people that can play in contact, can take contact, can take hits not lose their balance, still be able to grab boards, you know, be a factor, you know, at least control that guy and get a body on him. And Darius was able to do that. So when we lost D, you know, that that affected us. I mean, one of the best plays to me that Darius makes tonight is on the offensive end when Mike, I want to say is Mike, Mike throws him a ball when where he caught it was right in front of the bench half court. They were pressing. He could have panicked. He actually catches the ball, faces up. He doesn't panic. He gets it to Dion. Dion ends up making the dump down pass. I believe that's the play. But like that small thing goes unnoticed. But I watched enough guys tonight panic, and yet and still he doesn't panic, and he's calm, and we're able to get a play. To me, the game winning play was the catch, the pass to Dion, not necessarily Dion's pass. Not taking anything away from Dion, but that was the play, and so. When you're able to get that, you know, from a guy like that and, and doing some of those things, the little things, a couple of times they're pressing, he rolls back, he comes back, he catches the inbounds pass, and he doesn't panic, and he doesn't turn the ball over. So those are things that are crucial that you need. Speaking of catching oh boy, that, does it ever uh, come back? And there were a lot of passes that were pretty good passes that ended up muffed on the receiving end. A lot. Does it ever come back in your dream seeing these things? Well, no, it doesn't. Because I, I want that to stay in a dream. <laughs> I don't want it to be reality, okay? No, I mean, listen, it's, it's funny, but there are certain guys who catch balls, and they're going to catch them no matter what happens to traffic. And then there's some guys you've had and you've seen you don't know. And, and quite frankly, I mean, some of those dudes are being, I told them, and they're being challenged. I don't want to hear about it. I got hit. There were some people in the way. Players don't care. They just know they got to get the ball. And you go after the ball like your life's depending on it. And that's what they do, you know. And, you know, Marcus catches them. You know? You're all concerned about the free throws down the stretch. Well, we had shot we had shot free throws pretty well, and then of course we miss we miss some free throws. Uh, Marcus misses two, and you know shouldn't have missed two. He's got a good touch, and that's not typically, but you know it's probably the first time he's actually been in that situation at this level. Um, glad that we were able to win, and now he has that experience. Haruna misses two. That wasn't good, and and just with our luck, of course, after the two, they hit a three from. 35 feet, Jesus. I knew when he shot it, it was going in. Just the way it is. It's that kind of game. But, you know, we'll, we'll close it out. I think Mike missed one, missed one of two at one point. But, you know, they'll get better. I'll take those guys going through and getting that experience, though. Um, those kids, they'll, they're, they'll be fine. They, there's, you know, some of those guys, that, you know, typically they don't miss those. But it's a good experience for them. It looks like there's several things that they could take for uh, confidence going forward with playing in overtime and being behind and, and this level of athleticism. I like your optimism. I like your optimism. I mean, listen, I feel like crap right now, okay? But we won the game. Um, 
And the lesson is for me is, you know what? Could have lost this game, and you'd feel even worse. So I'll take the win. Um, I'll take these guys growing. Um, I've got to get Michael to keep coming because he goes through those things early in games and he and he gets frustrated and loses it. He's got to keep coming. He's just And I told him in the locker room, you just have to settle down. Teams are going to guard you different ways. There is a difference between being scouted and then being the dude on the scouting report. There is a difference. And you just got to get people involved because he has enough ability to where he's going to be able to do things. I mean, he was upset he missed his first shot, which was a dead layup, and he blew it. And then it trickles down. He comes down to the other end, and he gets a foul. Start. You just That's not what you have to do. Just settle. But how many times, Haruna, how many layups did he miss? Oh, God, miss it or bobble a ball. I mean, that stuff just, oh, boy, you know. But give him credit. Our guys found a way to win. They did. I think we're good. Thanks, guys. Um, <laughs> what did you guys think uh, were your faults tonight, and how did you overcome them to get the uh, I felt like uh, our faults came um, from early turnovers. Uh, they were very athletic, so they were speeding us up and getting us out of our comfort zone. Um, we just didn't take our time running the offense, which was uh, one of our faults. Also, uh, matching up on the defensive end was another one because – uh, either a bucket or a miss, we didn't really know who we had. So we had to fix those things during halftime. How's it feel for you, though? I mean, uh, first career double-double, career highs, points, rebounds, uh, minutes. To come up big, that big in a game like that, it's got to leave you feeling pretty good. Uh, yeah, um, the coaching staff just, they preach to me every day that you have to bring uh, just something off the bench, energy, uh, going after rebounds, loose balls, just having your nose like in every play, every time. And, you know, today I just felt like our team needed a spark, so I just decided to come off the bench and, you know, just give them that spark that they needed. Speaking of comfort zones, uh, what's your comfort level now, say, as compared to week one? Are you settling in? And what kind of adjustments have you made in your game since the beginning of the year? Um, I would say uh, definitely after the first game and to this game that I've settled in pretty well. Some of the adjustments I've made was uh, learning how to make the easy play. Uh, in high school, I used to get away with like a lot of bad plays, and those don't really fly here. So that's one of the uh, biggest things I've learned. And just another thing was just to bring energy, just be active, have a motor play hard every possession. Uh, you mentioned their athleticism. It looked like it was, uh, as a team, particularly tough to work inside on them. How was it working, especially against that big number 11? Uh, it was uh, very tough. They were a very athletic and competitive team, which, you know, you got to play hard, play just every possession hard. Uh, number 11, really good player. He's tough. Uh, Hustles all the time, grabs rebounds, and it was actually pretty tough scoring on him because he's a pretty good shot blocker too. Got a lot of young guys out there uh, at various times down the stretch and everything. Uh, what's the the mindset here of uh, you know being in these kind of uh, tense situations uh, with such a young crew? Uh, the mindset is just to stay poised, um, stay in the moment, uh, know what you're in. Know what you're running. Uh, don't get flustered at all about anything. What was the difference in the second half defensively? When you talked about talking it out at halftime, better communication on the floor? Was that what uh, was? Yeah, definitely better communication on the floor was uh, a big thing preached during halftime. Uh, Coach Coop told us that, Coach Coop and Coach Trey told us that we weren't very, we weren't communicating very well on the floor when uh, on transition defense. So that was one of the big things. And also gang rebounding was another uh, thing they preached that we just have to go to the boards because number 11 was going every time. Anybody else? Marcus, thank you. Thank you.